everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I want to show you how you can easily create this really fun abstract landscape yourself at home. I'm going to explain every part of the process. We're going to use some really fun tools today, and we're going to go through this step by step so your painting is just something that you feel really proud of and you're excited to post on your wall and share with your friends and family. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He helps me do all this by zooming in with one of our four robotic cameras. He reads questions from the live chat. This is probably going to be a shorter than usual class today, but I think you're going to find for that brand new first time painting level, this is a great project to start with. Are you guys ready to jump in and just see how we're going to do this? Absolutely. Okay. So right here, I have the example painting, and this is one that I did uh, so that I know what I'm doing and you guys have an idea of where we're going from. We definitely going to have picture in picture so you can follow along easily. This is done on a nine by 12 art board. So art boards aren't better or worse than stretch canvas. They're just a different surface to paint on. And if you're painting a lot, I find that it's uh, helpful to not have stretch canvases because they just take up more room. And so I have like thousands of paintings. Switch into art boards is what I did. But if you're doing stretch canvas, don't feel like worried or insecure about that at all. Also in our material list is CAD yellow medium, quinacridone magenta, Thalo blue, thalo green, titanium white. I have to make trees assorted crafting sponges. These are sea sponges that they sell for crafters. We did check on this a while back. It's not an environmental issue to use sea sponges. They're harvested like pruning a plant. So um, the damage to sea sponges is definitely not from us. The art is probably more from the industrial complex than anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Um, it's, yeah, they're a great thing. Yeah. They're, it's actually really good for them to do that. So um, this is an artist knife. I have a diamond head and I have, I have a nice little trowel here. I have a fan. I'm going to show you a fun, easy way to do reflections with that fan. And I have a big, wide brush for painting. Other tools that you might not expect that you need for something like this is your T-square. If you don't have the T-square, your goal is to make as straight and level of a line as possible on your surface. So you would come to, in this particular one, it's literally dead on almost the halfway point, right? So it would be at, on a nine by 12 surface, it would be at four and a half inches. And it's not too like overwhelming to think about. So you just would like go there and very, very carefully, you know, know that right here at that midpoint or so is where you would be um, doing your horizon reflection, so. Good tool to have around if you don't have it and you have a steady hand. Well, power to you. That's awesome. On here, I have the wish for this year, uh, for anyone watching today, that you get inspiration and relief from pain, mental or physical. I think sometimes I'm going to blend this out with my brush now that we put that wish out there. It can be real easy to get caught into um, feeling uncreative and unmotivated in life, especially if you're struggling with pain that's physical or mental. Mm -hmm. And no, that doesn't mean that you're not creative or you'll never create again. That is sometimes a natural human response. And so my wish is that, that re you get relief from that and you can paint again, but don't feel bad. <laughs> I was just reading some stuff in the chat earlier. So I'm taking titanium white with my big number 30. So we go pull it out, flip it, pull it out, and we're just putting some white here on the canvas to help it flow. When we do the next part, it really does make a nice big difference. Now for the next part, I'm gonna take a little bit of my quinacridone. Notice I didn't rinse out my brush and I'm coming and just getting the edges of the bristles kind of worked out. And a lot more yellow and some white. That's great. And we're gonna to come to that middle line that we had. There we're doing. And we're gonna go back and forth on that middle line. This is going to be where the trees, where the land meets the water. Mm. So we're doing a reflection piece. We're using the way that landscape on still water reflects to help us feel that these are trees and water. And the trick to that is notice that my brush strokes are very level. That's actually one of the reasons why sometimes I like to put that line in with my T-square first to help my brain see where that level margin is. Now I can put a little more yellow on my brush, it's okay if it's got some pink on a little more yellow. And let's come right in the middle and add that little flash. Can you see that little flash? Mm -hmm. That's fantastic, isn't it? Everything is still wet. Going very quickly, I'm gonna put some more of the magenta into my brush and get some of the yellow, but keeping it very magenta. 
and then getting the white into it because what we're creating is like a salmon pink color. Anybody like salmon? Yeah, everybody like a salmon. I'm gonna come right here, going back and forth, and paint that wonderful salmon color up the canvas. So that's the white, the cad yellow, and the magenta. Got a nice little salmon color. And then where these two meet, we go over it with the brush, blending those two edges to each other. Then back up here, covering the canvas with the paint. Notice that I'm working it fairly quickly, going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that what that's doing is, and sometimes I have to get in here with my brush. That's helping me work the paint into the surface. Now, if I want it to be a little more magenta in my salmon, I'm just going to come in, dip in the water, just the tip of the brush to improve the flow up here at the top, going over it. See how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. This is one of those colors that sometimes can be a little frustrating for new artists. I actually have a video on how to make it different ways. I should do more of those color mixing. This is a weird color you may like. See, I have flipped the surface over. You I'm going to do the same up here, right here, as I did here. And I'm going to want to leave about this much space of that yellow to remain. So that's our goal. I've just dipped in the water. I'm going to pull out, flip, pull out, grab a little of the yellow to get it into that salmon. So peach and salmon are basically an orange or a very warm kind of orangish red with white added to it. And the difference would be how much red to yellow is in it. Salmon has a little bit more red. Peach has a little bit more yellow. Well, I have to say, the comment in chat. Is the you're comment in chat? Is you're looking very pinkalicious today yourself. I am feeling pink. Like the painting was pink. And I was like, I want to be pink. And I'm sporting my beautiful gift from my mother-in-law. And I'm just feeling really good. <laughs> it was and, you Some know, days I, we got to be pink, right? Roxy Carmichael and all that. Mm -hmm. And about half the room was like, yes, Roxy! <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that know, she's the girl in that song. Mm. So um, I'm going to put a little more white out <laughs> <laughs> and add some yellow into it. And I'll go ahead and go here. I just want to make sure that we've got a nice spot there for the water. See how I did that there? I did. That's going to really help this water happen. Now, uh, there's a lot of videos kind of demonstrating these techniques out there, but a lot of times the work of how we got to this little blended space is sort of edited. It's a blend edit out and you may not see it. So by watching this live, you're getting a better sense of how that's done at home. And that yes, levelness is very important. Very important. It's see, the most important. Rosalind got me all excited. Yeah. She said, I got a new, uh, I got a new Tucker. And I was like, you got a Tucker? And then I reread re it. She got a T ruler. And T square. <laughs> now those are important for making things level, aren't they? They are just the best. <laughs> I think that's one of my favorite takeaways from art school is like T square is my life. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, it was like spell check. It was just a big thing for me because like level lines and the, anyone who follows any of my social media knows spelling. Not really. I emotionally spell things. You do. I'm going to dry this. John's I know you gonna are. going to take some I'm questions. He'll read some questions and, and while I'm drying this, and we'll see you back here in a second. All right. So while she's doing that, I'll say, make sure you thoroughly dry your surface between coats. And the reason for that is that, uh, well, there's several. One is that you don't want it to pick up those layers. So if you're going over, let's say, this, this pink with a yellow, you don't want it to pick up the pink and muddy up. So you want it to stay nice, brilliant yellow. So, so you don't want your, your colors to mix. That's a good reason to keep them dry. Another one is uh, the drag on your brush. A, uh, a tacky surface will have more drag and it can actually pull up the uh, paint from the surface. It's called underbinding. So by thoroughly drying your surface, making sure that's all the way done, you won't get that underbinding, you won't get lifting, and it'll be a nice, smooth, no drag surface. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Now I'm going to take my T-square again, and I'm going to find my approximate middle range. You'll notice that I flipped the canvas over during the drying, and that's because I really like this slightly creamier spot here mm. that just organically happened, and I thought, oh, that's a little more like water for me. And so that's why I did that. That's a lot of times artists will make those subtle decisions, and we don't necessarily think to tell our students about them, but that was the thing that happened right there. I was like, ooh, creamy spot. Flip the canvas over, 
And now I'm loving it. Mm. I'm going to go ahead again. This is a charcoal, a white charcoal pencil, and I'm going to, uh, this is a nine inch canvas. So again, at the halfway point, make a little mark. And I'm going to make a very light mark just so that I can help get my tape placed down. I just need enough of in that information to be able to get my tape down because otherwise I get a little lost. And that's almost not even enough there. I may take um, some charcoal that's going to leave a little more charcoal for me to see just so I can get the tape. You know, there Patty's you in chat today. Who is? Patty. Hi, Patty. And she asked the magic question. What's the magic question? The magic question was, does the bubble machine work? Well, that is kind of possibly working, except now it's raining bubbles on me from the new angle. We've been six <laughs> angles in the studio today trying to find the new spot for the bubble machine. Because the goal is, like you'll notice here that my surface got real covered in glycerin. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a little covered in glycerin. I don't really know how the tape's going to hook like stick now. <laughs> so we're still working out those moments. <laughs> but see, you're part of the experiment <laughs> you're with helping us. us learn so this is low tag tape if all you have is masking tape just take a strip like this and go touch your sofa or jeans or something up and down curtains get a little lint on it and that'll make it uh, low tack for the purposes of this the reason i put this here is so i can sponge happily and not worry about keeping my horizon line very level i'm going to burnish this down with my fingers and then i am going to take my artist knife and we're going to start with a mix of one part green and one part blue. That's how you're going to make thalo turquoise, and the trees will start in that range as they do. Always sort of fun. I'm going to wipe this off, and just to help myself out, I'm going to mix the other kind of colors. I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow over here into the green, as you can see, and that's going to be my next range of trees, and I'm thoroughly mixing it. All right, so this is a thorough mix. Here we go. And then I'm going to take this yellow here and just this yellow and the green. And I didn't even grab a bead. I just what it was on my palette. See, I've gotten those three ranges of different paint. So turquoise, deep green, yellow green. I'm going to put out a little more um, white so I have it for my trees and I'll put it in a couple spots that don't already have paint because the sponge will pick up everything. Now, tree sponges. I really like these that have sort of the little long tenderly bits because they give me a really specific little tree. This is also pretty good here. What you want to avoid is the holes that make patterns. So you don't want patterns. You just like, you'll notice like that there, that hole, that's gonna make a pattern. So I'm going to take this little guy here. You can see I've loved it a lot in, in its time. And I'm going to grab my turquoise and I swirl it around, loading it like this. And I'm going to start by tapping up and down. Right. And making this little tree shape. Every time you do this, they're a little bit different. And I come over here and tap up and down another little tree shape. They're just little bushes, really, guys. Just irregular little shapes that go, oh, that's a little bush-like. And you can turn my sponge. See how I turn my sponge? Not bad. And then I might come and grab just a smidge of my white. To some different spots on the sponge. And then very delicately, I'm going to make some sort of little tops of trees. So what I'm trying to do is leave dark and then a little line of highlights. And that's gonna help imply that it's a tree. What you see me doing here is kind of mixing it a little bit on the palette before I get to the canvas. And like, I might be right here, I'm gonna go low. If I go low right there, it'll imply kind of a low bush, right? How's that, guys? Now I'm going to put that little sponge away in a, in a water glass so it doesn't dry. And I'm going to just move on very quickly to the green. Here's the green. I'm loading it right up. Boom, boom, boom. And now let's add some green. Deeper green trees. See how we've got And we layer back into what's come before. 
back into this. Oh, there's some green. And then when I want the bush to be more solid, I press harder. And when I want it to feel like little bits of leaves that have gone elsewhere, I press lighter. I'm going to grab a little of this and my white. Now let's come here and add some of this highlighted. And if I need a little more yellow, which I feel like I do because I want it to be super bright, I can always put just a little more yellow into that mix, can't I? Mm -hmm. And come right here and go like this. Tap it on my palette to make sure it's okay. Let's come to the top again. There we go. Bright oh, green yeah. leaves. That's what we're going for. Tops. And then a little bit of bush close by. Mm -hmm. As we come into the center, I'm going to get a little more yellow and even maybe some of that green mix that I have there. Some white, because we want this to be considerably lighter and brighter. And then here is the center of our little tree bushes. If you need some white there, you can go ahead and get it. There we go. Just a little bit of a highlight that happened there. So that's fantastic. Again, sponge and water so the paint doesn't drown it. And then if you're happy with how your trees are, all you've got to do is then just remove this tape. Now for the next part, I might need to mix a little of my previous paints out. So I'm going to go ahead and put some green here. And I'm going to get my artist knife out again. And you'll remember what was our turquoise? It was one part green and one part blue. Mm -hmm. That was our turquoise. That's pretty good. And now I'm not going to mix it quite as thoroughly. Notice it's a very loose mix with some white in it. I'm going to come here underneath this turquoise tree. The bead is on the right side of my knife. I'm going to be stroking downwards and I'm going to have this at a angle that isn't completely fat to the canvas and isn't completely edged. It's like a 45 degree. Place flat and as straight as you can, pull down. I come right here. Now, if I may comment. Yes. The absolutely subtle waviness as you pull down. Yes. Is what gives it the effect of it being a shimmer on water. Yes, it does. Now I'm coming over here with a little bit of blue. I'm just moving quickly while John's explaining. It does in a loose mix too. Notice I've yes, got the blue the loose here. Mix. And I'm gonna come right on top and just very softly. Now this is a little more engaged, a little more flat. There we go. There's that one. Everybody loves your palette. It looks real pretty. It is a pretty palette. Let's come over here and do the same over here. Where the trees are taller, you would stroke down longer. And if I want a darker reflection, I just grab that right now and go right over the top. It's amazing how you can go over the top like this to me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this and wipe this out. Again, you see these videos all the time, and I'm going to start teaching some of these because I think knowing how it's done is really fun. So I'm going to take a little of my green here. And some of my yellow and make that darker green mix that I was so fond of. And let's come right here and we can put a little bit here, look. And then begin to pull it down there. And you can see how there's this mixing that happens on the surface. When I want it to skip, I flatten the knife parallel to the canvas. So it's just about a little bit of an adjustment. If you need more, you just get more. As I move forward, I definitely want it to be more yellow.
and it can help to come along the edge. Coming along here. There we go. So we're starting to see the reflection of those trees. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. By the way, doing a complicated landscape, it's fussier, but it's not different in its philosophy, in its thinking, in its methodology. Essentially, if you're trying to make trees that reflect on a lake, you need to create a mirror. So if this tree is tall, this tree is tall. As it comes down shorter, you're trying to duplicate what you see. Whether it's abstractly or whether it's objectively, that's what you're going for. And sometimes being abstract helps you understand the goals of an objective painting. That's why I like to continually offer it. Now I'm going to take this out here and I'm going to put some white on my surface. And I'm going to grab the, just this is a bristle fan. You could grab one of my fans. I'm just grabbing this one. And it is a number two. You could grab a four or six or an eight. What you want is just a very flat fan. I'm not using this one today. Can you see the bend? Can you show them the bend in it? Hey, robot camera, come here. So one of my studio helpers helped me wash my brushes, oh. and this was laid against something and bent. Oh, I see it. So it's I've got to, I'll be just, a, I'm all good right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting <laughs> sweet girl, thank you. So I'm going to have to reshape this. So what mm. you're looking for is at least this straight. Oh, you're in your head the other way. There we go. Sorry. There we go. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's mm -hmm. just an important thing I wanted to tell you about because you might not know. A little more water loading up. Where are you at now? I'm going to come right here. So I'm going to tap very lightly up and down, making straight lines across with the white. Yes, some of the color may pick up. And I'm making what we think of as the water reflection coming down. You guys having fun with this? Mm -hmm. Little light abstract paint. And see how that's almost like the little sparkly sparkles on water? That's a little different than just using the straight knife. You could use the straight knife edge and do a similar thing. I just wanted to show you guys another way of doing that. that you might enjoy. And as I come down lower, you'll notice that the, the sparkles are a little longer, a little more defined, a little strongly presented. Again, if you were painting reflection down water, similar thing. As the waves get bigger, closer to you, they make bigger sparkles. Yeah, and just the, the way that the light kind of comes down in this little tunnel is very nice. Tunnel of sparkles. Now... Sometimes in abstract painting, people don't sign their artwork because if it's a true abstract, it doesn't have like an up or down or any of that, right? And you wouldn't want to make that decision for the collector. But this is an abstracted, not purely abstract, abstracted landscape, which means it's still identifiable as a landscape, but the forms and shapes and shadows, those have been more loosely and emotionally expressed than factually expressed. So we get to sign it is my point. <laughs> now, Amy was just asking, should you put sparkles all over the place? Or no, I think it's very important to have short little sparkles here. And then as you come out, it, they kind of widen out. And then sometimes I like to bring them a little bit back in, but stronger in the front. Mm. And what's really nice is when you look at a picture of water reflecting up a lake, you can see where like those lights are and be like, oh, I can just loosely paint it like that. Gotcha. Now, I'm going to use a color I did use in my surface so that my signature is still part of the composition and does not detract. Like if I were to use a cad red right now, that would not be friendly to my project. So I still have to think about my signature as part of the composition. I don't know. This is really cool. I know it was a short one, guys, but how much fun that was this? Out great. Woo! What's the, oh, yeah, there we go. Look what you did. Yes, you did. That turned out fantastic. It did, didn't it? Now, tomorrow, we're uh, not tomorrow, Tuesday, we're meeting up to do this one. Mm -hmm. So it's a two hoot. It's a little more, it's abstracted, but it's a little more objective than even this one is. Um, I don't know. You never know we're going to go live. So be sure you sign up for the text notification system because we're 
testing some new features. We are. And who knows where, when we'll be live testing those new tools and features to do something weird. But I love painting with you. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.